Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 17. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We do this series on the first of every month. If you're curious and would like to see what this analysis looked like in prior months, I would encourage you to go watch the playlist because it actually has been working out relatively well so far this market cycle. This is not just the market capitalization of Bitcoin, but it's actually the market capitalization of the entire cryptocurrency asset class. And as of November 1st, 2021, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a very modest 2.63 trillion, with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line coming in at 1.05 trillion. This more or less represents an overvaluation of approximately 150%. Now, the overvaluation of 150% might sound like a lot, but when you think about the idea of, of us speculating that the next market cycle peak would correspond to an overvaluation probably closer to 600%, then 150% doesn't seem so bad. If you look at prior cycles, we spent significant amounts of time in the overvaluation region before finally retracing and going back to the undervaluation region. And at the current time, we're still not that far away from our fair value logarithmic regression trend line. Again, we're only 150% removed from it, which again, it could sound like a lot, but when you consider that the upper part of the band is maybe at seven or eight trillion right now, you realize that we should still theoretically have a long way to go. Now, when we look at these cycles, we can see that over time, over time from say market cycle bottom to market cycle peak, we can see that the slope is changing, right? The slope is changing, the angle of attack is, is becoming less steep. In addition, in addition, from one cycle to another, you can see that we spend more time, right? We spend more time in that cycle. So this was a pretty short cycle over here. Then we had this cycle, which lasted a bit longer, and then the third cycle, which lasted even longer than that. And now we are currently in the fourth market cycle as measured from market cycle bottom. Of course, if you measure it as from the halving, we are in the third market cycle, okay? Now note that the cycle has already technically lengthened as measured from the halving, which I know is what a lot of people use. Again, a lot of people were calling for a market cycle peak in September. That has come to pass. And now the cycle has technically lengthened from the halving. I'm now speculating that we will lengthen from the market cycle bottom. We are not technically lengthened from the market cycle bottom yet. In order to lengthen from the market cycle bottom, we still have uh, approximately 20 days to go or something like that, about 20 days to go before the market cycle peak or before the market cycle is technically lengthened from the market cycle bottom. Now, when looking at this chart, one of the things we speculated on back in April uh, and even going back to say December of 2020 was it looked like we were in a double peak cycle at the very least. Look, it could end up being something completely different, but back then it looked like we were headed up for a intermediate peak back in April, similar to 2013. And it looks like that's more or less how things have played out. Now I know everyone is, is fully aware of this today and everyone's talking about it like it's, it's obvious. Again, we were talking about this on here because of this analysis back well before it happened. Back in, in December, January, February, March, and April, we were saying, all right guys, it looks like we're going into an intermediate peak of the cycle. We are likely going to have some type of short-term blow off top to the upside. Again, it was more of a, of a long distribution, um, but it more or less played out. And again, this was done before it happened, not retrospectively after it happened, um, because again, after it happened, who cares, right? After it happens, who cares? It's all about realizing that we were ahead of schedule beforehand. Now, when we look at this chart, we say, well, what's going to bring in a market cycle peak? What could usher in a market cycle peak? Well, I mean, I would argue that if the market capitalization of crypto is being overvalued by, let's say, 600% from the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which again, is a monotonically increasing function, that's this red trend line, then we could be looking at a market cycle peak. But as of now, I would still say we're still fairly in in sort of no man's land. We're not we're not sort of I don't I don't consider us to be at a market cycle peak, but I also don't consider this to be the pits of a bear market either. I mean, I, I don't think anyone's going to look around right now and say that a sixty two thousand dollar Bitcoin is bearish. OK, it's certainly not bearish by any stretch of the imagination. Of course, it doesn't mean we can't have dips and whatnot along the way. We just drop back below 60K 
in the last 12 hours or so from the time of this video, but now we're back up to $62,000. So obviously the, the market does still fa appear fairly bullish, I would say, uh, but, I, but I would also argue that we're not at a market cycle peak yet. Like, it, you know, this is not, we're, we're still fairly far away from where I would consider a market cycle peak to be put in. Okay, so this is sort of what we're looking at. This is the same green rectangle we've had drawn for, for a long time. And I, I sort of, I more or less anticipate this is, is where we're headed. Somewhere in this rectangle is, is sort of where we're headed over the next several, several months at the very least. Now, if we take the percent difference between the total cryptocurrency market capitalization, which is the white line, and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, is, which is the red line, and then shift it by 100% so we can assume undervalued is, is here just below 100%. And this is the trend you get, okay? This is the trend you get. And when you look at this, you can say, all right, well, there's, there's, there seems to be, there seems to be this sort of macro downtrend that, that comes out of it. Now, is this a trend line you can take to the bank? Probably not. I don't think they will cash it in for you, unfortunately. But what it does say is that based on this analysis, based on the total cryptocurrency extension from the fair value, it stands to reason that time is still on our side, that we still should have a ways to go for the duration of the market cycle, okay? And when you look at this, we've noted before that we had these three major peaks. We also had an intermediate peak in 2013, and now we've had another intermediate peak in 2021. And I know a lot of you guys are looking at this and saying, well, look, Ben, you know, if we repeat what happened last November in 2013, then the market cycle peak could be in November. Because again, in 2013, the market cycle peak did come in November. It was not December, like a lot of people might say. If you go look at a chart, which everyone is fully capable of doing, if you go look at a chart, the market cycle peak in 2013 was in fact in November, not December. So if we were to repeat 2013, from now, it could mean a market cycle peak coming in less than a month, right? But I don't personally think that's going to happen. I still think we have a much longer way to go. One of the reasons I think that is because if you look at the angle of attack from this, from this first intermediate move to the second one, they were very similar to one another, okay? And if we were to say overlay this peak to where we are today, it, that doesn't seem like it would make a whole lot of sense. You probably would wanna overlay this sort of leg to this one, which would easily get us into 2022. I've been pretty adamant since 2019 that I think the market cycle is going to extend into 2022. I still think it's going to extend into 2022. Where could I change my mind on that? If Bitcoin goes to say 150 to $200,000 in the next two months, then it's probably the market cycle peak. Okay, I'll repeat that again. If Bitcoin goes to 150 to $200,000 within the next two months, we are probably looking at a market cycle peak for the entire asset class. If we're not trading at those valuations, I would still, it would still stand a reason that there's a decent probability that we will continue into at least 2022. Now, if we look at this, we can see the further similarities between the current cycle and 2013, right? We came down, we had a move back up. This was our 2019 rally. I'm sure a lot of people remember that. Then we had another capitulation down to the purple circle, another move back up close to the fair value, and then a final capitulation before taking off. So you can see the similarities between 2013 cycle and then the current cycle. Okay, and we also noted, again, we drew this rectangle before we have, before we had this pullback, uh, that we're probably gonna have a pullback down to between 100 to 200% overvaluation. Remember, it is, it is shifted by 100%, so it's really like 50 to 100% or something overvaluation. And, and then we would hopefully consolidate there for a while and then continue higher. Now, for the astute observers, you would look at this chart and say, well, Ben, you know, something about this doesn't really quite add up, okay? And I thought you were a math guy. And you're probably saying, you know, you're saying that the overvaluation right now is less than it was in April and May. That doesn't make sense, right? Because we're putting in new highs in terms of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. So how in the world could we be, un we could, we're actually more undervalued now than we were back in April? What does this mean? How can that be possible? Well, remember, remember, when we look at this stuff, we have to, we have to go back to the logarithmic regression trend line. It is a monotonically increasing function, right? So while we were further extended over here, the overvaluation over, or sorry, we were further extended, we're, we're getting further extended over here, but you can see that we're still under, more undervalued than we were back then. While it looks like that, why would we be so much more undervalued? Well, again, it's the percent difference between where we were 
and then the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. And that is a monotonically increasing function. The fair value back in say, you know, April and May was, was say 800 billion or so, but now the fair value is over 1 trillion. So the extension from the fair value isn't as much, even though we're, we're currently at the same, same more, more or less the same market capitalization, okay? So I think that should be taken into consideration. Another way to think about this is we know that the total cryptocurrency market capitalization of the, you know, the entire asset class, it had a bottom in December 2018, right here, okay? But we didn't go down to the green line. The March 2020 capitulation did go down to the green line. So what does that mean? Well, it means while the 2018 capitulation was technically lower, this one was probably felt a bit more because we were going more undervalued at the time than we were over here. At this time, we were the, the fair value was you know a couple hundred billion or so. But by over, by this point over here, we were looking at a fair value of say 500 billion, four or 500 billion. So for us to go back this low, while it technically wasn't as far extended as we were, or while it wasn't as low as we were over here, it was more extended from the fair value. Hope that makes sense. I hope I did a good job explaining that. If you're still confused, uh, maybe leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can get those answered. So let's go back to, to where we were. Right, let's go back to where we were. So we're looking at this, right? This is back in March. Again, this is well before we had this blow off top, right? Well before it. And we were sort of speculating that we're going to get an intermediate top and then come back down and move higher. We also looked at the same thing in February of 2021. We also looked at the same thing in January of 2021. This was well when we were way down here. I mean, Bitcoin was 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 well above, uh, well below 60K. We weren't even close to 60K at the time. Uh, you know, at the, the, the very beginning of January, we still hadn't made the move to 42K yet. We're still below 40K. So you can see, I think, why, why it is important to sort of look at these, these trends in the market using mathematics and try to figure out where should we be able to go ultimately over the macro scale with the entire asset class. And one of the things that people ask me all the time is, well, Ben, when do you think we're gonna have a market cycle peak? And, and to be completely clear, no one knows exactly when the market cycle peak is going to happen. I think it's more of a reactionary thing. It's more when we do go to an overvaluation that I think would classify as a market cycle peak, then I would argue that, that it is likely the market cycle peak. It's hard to know exactly when that would happen, right? It's very hard to know exactly when that would happen. If you think about it, back in, back in April, there were a lot of people calling for 300K by September, right? And, and, and that's come to pass. We were closer to 30K in September than we were to 300K. Again, we actually hit $39,000 at the end of September. So we were closer to 30K than 300K. So I think the idea that any person out there has any idea when exactly the market cycle peak is going to happen and where it's going to exactly go is, is probably a bit delusional because you can see just how silly some of these market cycle predictions can be just about six months later after they were made, okay? So we look at this, and I'm just giving you guys some dubious speculation on what the math could suggest in a market cycle peak, is well, first of all, could it still happen this year? I know a lot of people are, are sort of on board with it happening this year. Could it happen this year? It could, right, it could, but in order for that to happen, Bitcoin would need to rally probably a couple hundred percent within the next two months. If it does that, then yeah, you're probably right. It's probably this. It's probably going to be this year. But if you take some math and you say, well, look, the intermediate, the market cycle peak to this first intermediate peak was 672 days. Then from there to the second peak was 235. If you do that, a simple ratio, 672 over 1211, uh, which 1211 is coming from this peak to the intermediate peak here, equals 235 over X. If you solve for that, you get 432 days from the first local intermediate top that would put the next market cycle top in July of 2022. So that would actually be going toward towards the summer of 2022. So you'd have January, February, March, April, May, June, and then the very beginning of Q3, according to this analysis. But again, this is very dubious analysis indeed. It's not like you can take this ratio to the bank either. I am sort of just speculating though, what if the math did continue to hold up? When could it be? But you could also look at this in a number of other ways and say, well, could it be earlier than that? Could it be later than that? If you look at say the, 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 the length that, or the rate at which cycles are lengthening, they're getting lengthened, but at a lessened rate, right? So could it be before July, 2022? It could. I mean, maybe it'll be in March of 2022. Maybe it'll be in June of 2022. I think the most important thing is to just continue to provide an update on this analysis each and every month, right? If we provide an update on this analysis each and every month, then we should provide, we should see a decent, uh, we, we should have a decent idea of, of where things are. Right? If we if we skip out on it for six months, then we, we you know we 
we kind of get behind on, on where we actually are within the current market cycle. But if we look at say something like a 2021 peak, what we would need to do is basically just go straight up from here, right? If we can go straight up from here, then yeah, there's a good chance the market cycle peak comes this year. If on the other hand, we do something like this and we see a sustained slower move up into 2022, then I, you know, maybe it'll, it'll look something like this. Furthermore, if so, there's something interesting, we've shown this on the channel before, this is among, amongst the most dubious speculations that you can carry out, fitting a one over, or fitting, fitting something that's one over X or one over T. If you take the number of days and fit the prior three peaks, peak one, peak two, and peak three, versus the number of days into the cycle they occurred, you flip it over and you take inverse days and then you fit a curve to it, would you care to guess where peak four would be? It's further out than most people would expect, and obviously it's hard to suggest at this point that that's where the market cycle is headed. We'll take it one step at a time, okay? At this point, we could certainly have a market cycle peak in 2022, but if we get to the summer of 2022 and Bitcoin is only trading for 100K or 110K and it still seems like, look, we still have a long way to go, why, is, why are we not at a market cycle peak yet? Well, maybe we'll come to this analysis, which suggests that peak four, if you dubiously speculate on this extrapolation, would be in August of 2023. So it's really hard to know, right? It really is hard to know. I think at the end of the day, we just have to sort of go back to the math and say, look, do we know exactly what's going to pan out months in advance? We don't know exactly what's going to pan out. What we do know is that we can continue to update this analysis each and every month to see where we are. If by the end of the year, we're looking at a valuation up here, there's a good chance the market cycle peak is in and unless I'll go on vacation for a year and check back in then. On the other hand, if if we're continuing to, to to move up, but not at the rate which gets us to a potential market cycle peak, then I would that would suggest that we're likely going to extend into 2022, which is what I think is going to happen. I do think the market cycle will go into 2022. And furthermore, if it goes into 2023, then uh, I mean, we got nothing but time, right? At the end of the day, I, you know, whether you think it's going to be this year, next year, the year after, I would argue that time still very much remains on our side. If you look at this chart, I would still speculate dubiously, in fact, that the entire market capitalization should go to approximately $10 trillion. If, it, if the market cycle peak comes this year, I imagine it would be below $10 trillion. If the market cycle peak comes next year, I believe we'll hit $10 trillion. If the market cycle peak comes in 2023, then I believe we'll go above $10 trillion. And I as always say, right, I believe the market capitalization will ultimately hit a market cycle peak of approximately $10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and I will see you next time. Bye.